Rain lashed against the windows, each drop a relentless reminder of the storm brewing, both outside and within. Dr Lydia Crane shivered, clutching her bag closer, her knuckles white from the grip. The cold rain seeped through her coat, but it was the dread in her heart that truly chilled her. Arthur Cole's mansion loomed before her, dark and imposing, its silhouette a stark contrast against the stormy sky. The mansion seemed to breathe with an eerie life of its own. A shiver, unrelated to the cold, ran down her spine. It was as if the very air around her whispered secrets of the horrors within. The housekeeper, her face pale and drawn, ushered her inside. Her eyes darted nervously, betraying the fear she tried to conceal. The air hung heavy, thick with the metallic scent of blood. It was a smell that Dr. Crane knew all too well, one that spoke of violence and death. He's in the study, ma'am. The housekeeper's voice was barely a whisper, as if speaking louder would summon the horrors she feared. Her voice trembling, the housekeeper's fear was palpable, a mirror to Dr. Crane's own growing dread. Dr. Crane entered the study, her heart pounding in her chest. The room, once a place of intellect and discussion, now felt like a tomb. The opulent room, usually so full of life, was now a tableau of death. The dim lighting cast long shadows, adding to the eerie atmosphere. Arthur Cole lay sprawled on the floor, his eyes staring vacantly at the ceiling. The life that once animated him was gone, leaving only a shell. A crimson stain bloomed on his chest, stark against the pristine white of his shirt. The blood was fresh, the wound still raw. Dr. Crane knelt beside the body, her fingers seeking a pulse. Cold. The finality of death was undeniable. She noted the overturned chair, the scattered papers, the struggle evident in the disarray. Every detail told a story of a violent confrontation. This was no peaceful passing. This was murder. The room screamed of it, every corner hiding a clue, every shadow whispering of the crime committed. Arthur Cole, a ruthless businessman, lived a life of precision and control. Every aspect of his day was meticulously planned, leaving no room for error or spontaneity. Every morning, at exactly 7 a.m. sharp, he enjoyed his coffee, black, with two sugars. It was a ritual he never deviated from, a small comfort in his otherwise rigid life. This morning ritual was his only indulgence, a moment of peace before the chaos of the day. Until Veronica entered his life. Veronica, his young and beautiful wife, had eyes that could charm and a smile that hid a heart of ice. She craved his fortune and the power that came with it. Divorce was out of the question for Arthur. He was a man who believed in holding on to what he owned, no matter the cost. Despite his immense wealth, Arthur was not a man to let go easily. He valued his possessions and his status above all else. So Veronica devised a sinister plan. Arsenic, tasteless, odorless and deadly, would be her weapon of choice. A pinch of arsenic every morning in his coffee. It was a slow and methodical process, designed to mimic natural causes. The slow poisoning would gradually weaken him, causing symptoms that could easily be mistaken for a natural illness. Veronica's plan was as cold and calculated as her heart. Days turned into weeks. Arthur, once robust and full of life, grew weaker with each passing day. His strength waned and his once vibrant spirit dimmed. The illness took its toll, leaving him a shadow of his former self. Veronica, feigning concern, played the dutiful wife. She attended to Arthur's needs, 
her face a mask of worry. But behind those eyes, a different story unfolded. Her heart was cold, her intentions far from pure. Her lover, Brian, a man as ambitious as he was ruthless, grew impatient. He was tired of waiting, tired of the charade. The plan was taking too long, and his frustration grew with each passing day. This is taking too long. The old fool will outlive us all. We need to act now before it's too late. An idea sparked in his eyes, cold and calculating. A sinister smile played on his lips as he devised a new plan. It had to look like an accident, something no one would suspect. An accident. He would make it look like Arthur stumbled on the stairs, a tragic fall that would end his suffering. It was the perfect cover, a flawless plan. The opportunity presented itself sooner than expected. Arthur, weakened by the poison, his steps unsteady, reached for the banister, missed. His frail body couldn't support him any longer. Brian, lurking in the shadows, saw his chance. A shove, a sickening thud, and Arthur lay crumpled at the bottom of the stairs. The deed was done. The plan executed to perfection. Now, all they had to do was wait. But Arthur, though broken, still clung to life. A flicker of defiance in his eyes as he looked up at his assailant. It enraged Brian. He wouldn't let this old man cheat him. He grabbed a letter opener from a nearby table, its silver glinting under the dim light. A swift, brutal plunge to the chest, silencing Arthur Cole forever. He left the letter opener embedded, a macabre calling card. Panic, Brian fled the scene. He hadn't anticipated anyone else arriving. He hadn't expected Dr. Crane. Enter Detective McKenna. Detective Grace McKenna surveyed the scene, her gaze sharp, taking in every detail. The overturned chair, the scattered papers, the blood, the letter opener. A jigsaw puzzle of murder. She questioned the staff, her demeanor professional yet firm. The housekeeper, tearful and shaken, revealed Veronica's coldness, her lack of grief, Brian, the supposed best friend, his alibi shaky, his nervousness palpable, only deepened McKenna's suspicion. Unraveling the deception. McKenna discovered the affair. The whispers of Arthur's declining health. The whispers of Veronica's greed. She exhumed Arthur's medical records, requested a toxicology report. The pieces were falling into place. She confronted Veronica, presenting the evidence, her voice calm but unwavering. Veronica, her composure finally cracking, confessed. She detailed the poisoning, her voice a mix of fear and defiance. She pointed the finger at Brian, blaming him for the final act. The autopsy report confirmed McKenna's suspicions. Arsenic, present in trace amounts in Arthur's system, consistent with slow poisoning, the fatal blow, the stab wound to the chest, delivered post-fall, a desperate act of violence. McKenna had her case, the poison, Veronica's weapon of choice, the fall, Brian's brutality, and the final blow, a testament to their cold-heartedness. The trial was a media frenzy. Veronica, the Black Widow, and Brian, the ruthless lover, their faces splashed across newspapers, their crimes laid bare for the world to see. The evidence was insurmountable. The jury returned a guilty verdict. Veronica, pale and defeated, was sentenced to life imprisonment, her dreams of wealth and freedom turning to dust. Brian, his face contorted in rage, received a similar sentence. His ambition ultimately his downfall. The mansion, once a symbol of Arthur Cole's success, stood empty, 
a silent testament to the tragedy that had unfolded within its walls. The staff, their lives forever marked by the events, scattered, seeking solace elsewhere. And Dr. Crane, haunted by the image of Arthur Cole's lifeless eyes, found herself unable to shake off the feeling that amidst the answers, a shadow of doubt remained. Years later, a letter arrived for Detective McKenna, penned by a shaky hand. It was from Brian, his words filled with regret and a startling confession. He claimed sole responsibility for Arthur's death, insisting Veronica had no part in the final act. Was it a desperate attempt at redemption or a final act of manipulation from beyond bars? The answer, like the shadows in the Cole mansion, remained elusive a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface. 